safeties looking at the corners and then the guys that are playing nickel. Um, it's all kind of blended in because we're still all a group and we're all a work in progress. Keith, who's going to be your fourth cornerback? That could be, right now, it's a, it could be Alfonso, it could be Ronald Walker. It's going to be one of those two guys. Uh, you know, obviously, Alfonso's transition from offense. Tell me a little bit about what you what you like about what you've seen from him. Um, well, definitely his size. You know, he passes the eyeball test. Um, but he still needs to understand that playing corner and defensive back is very, very technical. You know, you got to get at the proper alignment, whether that's a press alignment, whether that's a five-yard cloud alignment, or playing a cover two or off, and you got to make sure you're at seven, not at nine. Because everything that we do is is based off of repetition and then how you walk out in the slow pedal and off and then get into your, your pedal. So everything is off of timing. So those things he just needs to be a little bit more disciplined and, and detailed in. But I think that's tough when you're not used to doing it all the time because it's a lot. Now you have to, you got to, you know, as a receiver, you're taught to line at a specific, specific place. But at corner, you don't know where that guy's going to line up. And now you have to take an alignment based off of where he's lined and then still understand what call you're in and what leverage you need to play. So um, it's a lot. And it, I mean, he, he's going to get it, hopefully. Um, but he will get it. You know, but uh, it's, it's going to take some time. Can he cover smaller guys? Uh, yeah, he, he, he can cover smaller guys. Yeah. You know, the thing is, really, he, his arms, I always tell him, you got these long arms. And I, and I, and I point at Shaq and I tell Tremaine, would you love to have this? Thing? And those guys are like, heck yeah. You got to learn how to use those tools. So the training and learning how to use your arms and extend your arms. I'm sorry, if you're a you know you're a six one six two guy and you got these long arms, you have to use those so that way guys release outside of your, your radius and you make them run wider release. Walker looks great physically. Um, how has he progressed from spring? You know, from, from the spring when he he's understanding the coverage is better. Yeah. You know, and then I think I, I'm not. I think I know he's studying more. So and that's good just because we need him. And I tell him as a corner, most of the time we just gotta listen. And I always train guys based off of the surfaces. Like in these particular coverages, you you obviously have number one, but this is how you have to play them. And if the safety's saying something to you, it's telling you something whether you play inside or outside. If the safety's not saying anything to you, now you gotta observe for yourself what space is around you and where that guy is. And I think he's learning that a lot better than when he was in the spring when he was just trying to line up the freelance and figure things out. Who's the most physical? of those two guys? Um, Ronald and Alfonso. Yeah. Throughout the spring, if you watch the spring, Ronald has shown that. Yeah. Looks like D. Smith might be a guy's last spring that might emerge. As a what are you going to do to get him on the field? Like there's a lot of safeties that you don't know, need to play. It seems like he's a guy you might say really needs to use. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been rotating them in with the ones. We've been moving guys around. Um, so we're trying to get our best of every football players on the field. And with that, D has been playing some free with the ones and long, you know, and then also with the twos. But we just been moving guys around. You'll see Josh move around a little bit. Um, even Chucky, he'll move around to some strong and to some free. Um, Zach Cannon will play some different spots. Um, but D is a, is a talent, man. He's very explosive. He's smart. So we got to find a way just to, I mean, that's our job as coaches to get the best of football players. Does Shaq, does Shaq still have the, uh, the title for the most trash talker, or the biggest trash talker in the um, Yeah, I mean, if he has that title, I mean, I think playing defensive back, and, and you have to have a certain amount of swag and, and confidence because every play that we play, you can get beat. And, you know, no disrespect to no defense alignment because that's a tough job. They're in the trenches and they have to be physical every play. However, people who not, someone who doesn't know anything about football, when we make a mistake, you know, everybody in the stadium sees it. So, you know, his trash talk and his swagger and all that stuff, you know, you, you just want people to do that job. But at the same time, you have to have some confidence and able to bounce back and then maybe to get in the guy's head. Sometimes that works. I mean, I talk some trash when I play. Like, what, what was one um, one situation where you talk trash if you got in somebody's head? At least, at least you, think, you thought he got uh, I don't know if I got in their head or not, you know, but. Who was one player? That he I mean, I talk trash to everybody. And then it was in a subtle way. I would come up to the line of scrimmage and, you know, I always did my homework on the opponent. Back then, it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, Twitter and all this stuff. It was like MySpace and, 
uh, I think it was like uh, whatever the social media thing was, but I would do my research, look where they're from, find out their sisters, maybe memorize their mom's name or if I could find out who his girlfriend was, and then just suddenly say something at the line of scrimmage or something. But, I mean, I can't remember, but I know I did it. <laughs> when it comes to Shaq and Josh Harvey, having that year under their belt last year, being able to fully go through a full season with the team, go a full season under the program, how much is their leap from last year to this year? How much have you seen as maturity, uh, as far as knowing the plays, knowing what position to get into, knowing what they're supposed to do. How far has that come along since last year? I'll remind you, I wasn't here last year. Okay, so um, what I see from spring, and but you know, when we're going through the spring with these guys, those guys know the scheme, they know the defense. So when we're making checks, they do a great job of adjusting to multiple formations and emotions and stuff like that. So that's good because you need that and you would expect that out of guys who, you know, been in this system ever since they've transferred from the other university. Um, and that's great because now other younger guys can, you know, they can teach those guys and talk to them about it. So that's been great. But what I reserve on film, some of the defense that they call is still, it's, it's still different. But what I see from spring to this fall, they're different. And as far as your depth, your depth chart is concerned, how confident are you as you drop down to that second, third, fourth guy if you need to bring somebody in? How confident are you in your depth? Well, that's who we got, so we're going to have to play with them. Um, how confident am I when that time comes, if they have to play? I'm going to have to put all the confidence in them because they're going to be a reflection of me. If I don't show confidence, they're not going to play confident. Thanks, Coach.